There are a number of ways we can edit and modify our cues in Artist. Before we begin, I'm going to highlight a very, very, very important thing that you need to get into the habit of doing, saving. Unfortunately, like every other piece of software out there, Artist can crash. There is nothing worse than spending hours programming a show only for the dreaded Artist to stop working dialogue to appear and you lose everything you've been working on. Artist does have an inbuilt autosave function and you will be prompted if you wish to activate autosave when you make the first change to a workspace. By default, this is set to every 10 minutes. Once you begin to program quickly, a lot can be achieved in the potential 9 minutes and 59 seconds since the last autosave. And if you have not been manually saving, you risk losing it all. Get into the routine of regularly saving and you will save yourself a lot of potential grief. So let's have a look at the different ways we can edit a queue. Firstly, I'm going to make a copy of our all pars on queue. This can be done by right clicking on the queue, selecting copy, then right clicking in blank space and selecting paste. We can also left click on a queue to highlight it, select edit, copy and edit, paste. Or we can highlight a queue with a left click and use the standard Windows keyboard shortcuts, Control C, and Control v We can select multiple consecutive queues by clicking and dragging around them, or by clicking on the first queue, holding down the Shift key, and clicking on the last queue. We can also select specific queues by clicking on each one of them while holding down the Control key. We can then copy and paste our selection in any of the same ways. We can also delete queues by selecting them and pressing the delete key. Or by selecting them and selecting edit, delete. So now we have some copies of our queue, I'm going to rename one of them by left clicking on it to highlight it and selecting edit and rename. Or by left clicking on it and then left clicking on it again about a second later. I'll rename this one all pars. 50%. So to edit our queue we have a number of options. The first is to load the queue back into the programmer. We can do this by right clicking on the queue and selecting set parameters. Notice that the queue isn't active as the red light has not come on. But if we look in the status monitor channels 1 through 8 are now set at 100%. If we click on the fixture tab we can see that all of our PARs are now on and the flag icon has now appeared. We can now select all of our PAR commands by pressing the All Group shortcut and dragging the dimmer fader to 50%. Making sure that All PARs 50% is displayed in the second drop down, we can now save our new values to the queue. This can be done with the Store To or Add To buttons. In this instance, both buttons will achieve the same thing, but they both perform different functions, and I will show you those in a minute. For now, we will just click Store To. The familiar dialog appears, and we click Save and Clear. If we now go back to the Queues tab, and activate All Pass 50%, you can see on the status monitor that channels 1 through 8 have now gone to 50%. Now let's say that on our next queue we want the middle four pars to be at 50% while the outer four pars remain at 100. First we will rename the queue outer 100 inner 50. Now instead of loading the entire queue into the programmer I'm going to set just the flags of the middle pars to 50% and save that to the queue, leaving the queue's current information for the outer pars unchanged. So by clicking on the fixtures tab, and using the middle grouping shortcut, I can now use the fader to set the middle par cans to 50%. Making sure queue list 1 is selected from the top drop down, and selecting outer 100 inner 50 from the second drop down, I'm now going to click on Add to. Add to appends anything that is in the programmer onto the queue that is currently selected 
in the dropdown. If the parameters were not originally set in the queue, they will now be added to it. If they were, any changes in their value will overwrite the old ones. Any parameters that are not in the programmer, but are in the queue, will be left as they are. As you can see, only values for park ends 3, 4, 5 and 6 are in the programmer. As these were already in the queue, the new value of 50% will overwrite their old value of 100% when we click Save and Clear. If we now activate the queue, we can see in the status window that the outer paths are at 100% and the inner paths are at 50%. So what would have happened if we had clicked Stored To instead? We will rename the next queue Store2Test and if we activate it we can see from the status window that all 8 parkans are still currently set to 100%. So by doing the same thing we will go back to the fixture tab, set the middle paths to 50% Select Store 2 Test from the drop down and click Store 2. Again, only paths 3, 4, 5, and 6 have values in the programmer. Now we will click Save and Clear. If we go back to Queues and activate the queue, you will see only the middle four park ends have come on and at a value of 50%. This is because Store2 will replace the contents of a queue with only the values that are currently stored in the programmer, removing anything else that isn't. Learning the difference between these two buttons and identifying the best time to use each one will really help speed up your programming. We can also edit our queues directly in the navigator. By clicking on the queues tab and expanding the branches, of the queue we wish to edit, we can delete parameters from our queue or edit values by right clicking and selecting edit content on the parameter we wish to change. Next time we will look at using artists inbuilt chase generators to add dynamics to our queues.